This is Sarah Slyer from Anna and the Apocalypse, and you're listening to Without Your Head. Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by Marley Sue, who plays Lisa in Anna and the Apocalypse, Hello. which was amazing. Hello. Yeah, I love the movie. It was, uh, I didn't get, I mentioned off air, but I didn't get to see it at Fright Fest, uh, because Fright Fest was, I didn't realize Fright Fest was so big, so, uh, and I didn't pre-order movies, so I missed uh, a lot of them. I know, we were surprised too, we didn't expect it to, I think a few festivals, it was out before, so it had a wee bit of a buzz by the time it got to Fright Fest, which maybe is what it sold really well at Fright Fest, which was amazing to have so many people come see it. Yeah. What what is that like to watch your movie with an audience? Really fun. Like I I hadn't really. Uh, it's the first film I've ever done, so I hadn't really ever had that experience before. And obviously, in theater, you you're not aware as as much. Whereas in a film, when you're sitting with the audience, you can really take in what the audience are feeling. And this is the kind of film where like audiences have been very um, vocal, <laughs> which uh-huh. has been like so exciting. Especially in Sitches, we had a. Uh, like a midnight screening and it was um a really like we were really worried we were all going into the, the theater thinking like oh god are these it was like you know like big like like you know 40 year old men with beards were like there is a musical I hate this what are they gonna right, think right. we're just sitting there being like are people gonna walk out what are they gonna think and they were so much fun like obviously all the horror aspects like all the blood and the gore like you'd get applause at like any big gore points which was like I hadn't ever thought I never expected that but then they were singing along they were singing along to like Hollywood ended and clapping away so that was really really funny to see all these men of these like horror t-shirts who looked like <laughs> avid horror fans like singing away uh-huh. to a film yeah definitely yeah it was um similar to to boss which was at a theater and uh it was a really fun experience because people actually were clapping like after the songs and people mm-hmm. laughing out loud I have to admit there was a few people who walked out like after like the first I, th- I assume maybe they didn't even know it was a musical. And I was like, I think you're probably in the wrong movie. But besides everyone who's, it was only a couple people, but everyone who's there, like really had a good time. That's probably the best reaction you get. You really get like, people are going to love it or people are going to hate it. It's probably the best reaction you can get from a film that no one's sitting in the middle. And if there, if there's walkouts, you know, at least they bought a ticket. So <laughs> like, we're still happy that they went, they even wanted to come see it in the first place, the market. And they obviously saw something they might've liked about it. Yeah. I think it's the marrying of the two um, such polar opposite genres is going to make people love and hate it. And we'd mm-hmm. be lucky that a lot of people have liked it. Yeah. It was weird because I actually saw a meme on Facebook and it was uh, it was like a diagram and it said people love musicals and people love horror movies. And then the ones that met in the middle said you were a serial killer. I need to find that so I can send a script chat. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. apparently, this is this is a movie made for serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely on that weird edge, I'd say. Weird. Yeah. Enjoy it. So, what did you think actually when you when you first heard about the movie and see the script? I thought it was great. I mean, I hadn't. This was also the first film I ever auditioned for, so I hadn't much experience of of reading film scripts. So I kind of thought maybe they were all that crazy because <laughs> <laughs> that was my bar. Was like Anna was the first thing I'd read. Um, I definitely thought like. Um, the the first thing I thought though was that the characters were all great. That was the first thing I really understood from it was that all the characters like were really well written and they all seemed like relatable people. And then it was later on that you I hadn't I couldn't really imagine the zombie part of it yet just from reading it. I didn't have enough experience to really think about what that was going to be like. Um, and the music we got sent a couple songs early. I think it was Breakaway and I will believe the last songs and the songs were so brilliant. That was. And I don't, I've never really watched, I've never watched a stage musical, so I didn't really know much about musicals, but I thought those songs were amazing. I think that was yeah. a huge thing selling it. The script and the music was so good. Mm-hmm. So did you have, do you have a background in singing? No. <laughs> I think singing's terrifying. I actually made a joke at uni where I was like, oh, I'm, I don't need to learn to sing. I'm never going to ever be a singer or have to do singing, so I'm not going to bother like <laughs> uh-huh. learning how to, because I found singing really scary. But um, I did, I did a, play before I um I auditioned for the film and that had a bit of singing in it and that's actually how I kind of got managed to get an audition because I was in a play with one of John McPhail's best friends so he came to see that and then I managed to get an audition he obviously had said to the casting director after that and he managed to get me in for the film so I did a little bit singing in the, in the play and that was terrifying mm-hmm. but 
it was the film singing was a was a less scary experience because Tommy and Roddy are really really good and make you feel so at ease with any singing. Yeah, you did a great job. I think it's one of the uh, well, actually, all the songs are really good in the movie. That's one of the most memorable songs. I think there's so many parts of that song that I was so lucky that like I got that song because yeah. I mean, you had like Tommy and Roddy who wrote a hilarious song, so it was going to be hard to mess it up, and then Sarah who choreographed. A ridiculous routine behind me so with all those parts I think I was in a, a great position to have a really fun moment in the film mm-hmm. for people who don't know it's a uh, it's that time of the year is the song and it's uh, it, it is very hilarious it's, it's perfect it's not if you just listen to it, you think oh it's a nice Christmas song but you know when you <laughs> listen to the lyrics it's still a nice Christmas song but much different <laughs> my um my cousin in Hong Kong messaged me the other day and he was like my niece who's nine he was like he sent me a video of her like drawing away and singing along to it. And he was like, "Oh, she yeah, loves it," and I was like, "No, <laughs> you really should be singing it." But I, I didn't. I was like, "Oh, I, that's really good that she likes it." But I was also thinking, "Oh no, it's a bit rude. Is, is she, are you sure she should be listening to that?" But I guess when you first hear it, if you don't tell people it's rude, it could just be. If you yeah. don't, kids if you might not, not. If you don't pay attention to the lyrics, right? It's oh, this is pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It was really funny seeing her sing along to it. So was that was that fun to perform, or were you since you uh, or were you still nervous about singing? Yeah, I was still nervous, but I'd already recorded it in the studio, and Tommy, me, and Tommy and Roddy had gone over all the different um, innuendos, and that was really funny, like thinking about all the different things, and so all the fun had happened in the recording studio, like of the actual singing it. So I, I'd like had a lot of fun then, and when it came to actually performing it in the film, like. I just felt really like unsexy. I had like this big dress on and like <laughs> just I just felt like the most like silly thing ever. I was like, this is not gonna be sexy, this is not gonna be funny. I don't know how and I hadn't really seen the dancers. Sarah's Sarah had rehearsed with them separately, so I wasn't hundred percent sure what they were doing yet. Mm-hmm. Um so but then when we actually did it all together, I thought like this is gonna be really fun. I think I hope it's gonna look really good. <laughs> yeah. So what is that particular scene like, especially the first time you watch it with an audience? You know, I think after a few times, you probably know people are into it. But the first time you're watching the movie and and, and that scene comes up, uh, what's that experience like? Like, really nice. It's really like, I think if you ever feel like nervous or worried, because obviously anytime you watch yourself, it's not very nice. But like seeing an audience laughing, you just know, yeah. like, that's like the nicest thing that you can have from it. Like that it's that that is paid like they that they're enjoying it. You know, they're enjoying it cause they're laughing. You don't know if they're enjoying other bits, but you know, like, are you, you can't really gauge emotional stuff and things, but like they, the first time I saw it was in Sitges. And, um, I remember the audience really laughing and a lot of the cast had already seen it at fantastic fest, which I can, I could make. So I was like a bit nervous about, it, and they all just looked at me like, <laughs> <laughs> well, my reaction was going to be, and that was, that was a really like lovely moment to see everyone laughing at it. It was, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. So um, my mom actually had to go see it the other day in Edinburgh, just in because it's out in cinemas now. And I was like sitting at the back of my mom, and when people were laughing, that was that was really nice as well. Like, see, <laughs> people think think it's funny. <laughs> what did she think of the movie? She was my mom's. Just like she doesn't really. I'm trying to think, of my mom's. She doesn't really watch horrors, and she doesn't really know much about music. My mom doesn't really know that much about movies. But she was just every time I was on screen, she just turned to me and was like. <laughs> Like, look, it's you. Like, was excited about that. Um, yeah, I think she enjoyed it. But my mom's not doesn't really know that much about films, so she'd be happy about it in anything. Yeah. yeah. Are there are there two different kinds of acting in the movie? Like, uh, you know, because the the musical stuff is like a traditional, like you know, a, a play like musical, and then, you know, then it's real horror, and and it does have like a lot of drama in it. So, do you have to have two different styles of acting? Um, I didn't think when I read it, I wondered that. I wondered if it was going to have to be a different, like, uh, thing for performing songs and a different, like, thing for horror. And did it need to be bigger than normal, natural? I I don't know. But, like, John was really good at making it, everything kind of existed within the same world. Like, when they sing, it's because, like, well, with Lisa, she's performing her show, so she's meant to be singing. Mm -hmm. And, like, even at other points when they're bursting into song, like, in Turn of My Life and stuff, it's all happening at the point in the story where these characters are feeling an emotion that then comes out in song. So it didn't feel like something on top of the script. It felt all within the same world and, and the horror aspect too. Like 
at that point that character is terrified and they need to run away so like it John made it all quite seamless it didn't feel like it was in jarring in any kind of way it all felt like it existed within the Anna and the Apocalypse world a little bit yeah yeah it's a very unique world it's a very unique movie no, it was a really also that group of people are a very unique group of people so I think that's how it kind of all happened in such a great way like they're, they're the funniest weirdest bunch of people ever mm who made this film. <laughs> so that's why I think that can sort of translate it also onto the screen. Yeah. So what is uh, John McPhail like, the uh, the director, as a person and to, and to work with? John, to work with, is like he's, um, like he just hung out with us. Like I, like I knew he was a director, obviously, but he was also just like one of our friends and you just want to hang out with him. And it was never a feeling of like hierarchy of John ever. Like John is friends and treats everyone the exact same. Like, you could talk to, like, the the guy who looked after the cars, to, like, the, the person who was in camera. Like, every, John talks to everyone the same. He's got no sense of being above anyone. And I would never worry about asking John a question or saying to John, actually, I think, like, maybe I would do this in this part. Like, John completely respects everyone in such a good way that he made a film set so lovely. And also, like, he's so creative. And if there was ever an issue, like, something happened where there was, like, one of the big vans that was going to be that transports all the lights it broke down and it was in the back of a shot they realized and so he just covered it in blood like he just adapts he wasn't ever like I couldn't tell he was stressed I'm sure he was stressed but like he just was so good at adapting and being creative and being like just the best person to be around you didn't think he never made you feel worried or stressed he was just such a lovely guy and as a person he's even more like he's just like he's just this funny Glasgow guy he's not he doesn't come across in I think anyone who meets him, he just, and he's the biggest horror movie fan. Like he'll be so good at all these podcasts. I was looking at your website and I was like, oh God, I don't, like John knows so much about horror films. Like he could talk <laughs> to you. You guys would probably talk until for hours and hours about horror films because he is the biggest fan of horror films and he, he's just a big movie geek as well. He just yeah. loves movies. And I think he, at festivals, he loves meeting people who love movies. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Are you a, mo are you a horror movie fan? Um, not to the extent as John, but like, right. I was worried because looking at your, your other like podcast stuff and I was like, I don't know much about like, you know, the, like the original horror movies and like you go back and like horror movie history and stuff. But like when I was a teenager, like I was obsessed with horror movies. Like that was the first, and my dad loved horror movies. So that, they were the films I watched first. Like, also any films that had been, there was like a video store near my house that we used to rent films from back in the day when you did that. Right. <laughs> and, um, you know, if there was anything that was banned or like was in a section where you're like, <laughs> right. that's the stuff obviously me and my friends were like obsessed with. So The Exorcist was the big one. That was the one we were originally like, was the first horror film that like we weren't allowed to watch it. So then me and my friend got a copy of it from her sister had a copy and we watched it over and over again. Um, yeah. I love The Exorcist. Um, I'm trying to think of other. Do you remember Gothica? That one stuck with me. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was terrifying. Uh -huh. <laughs> anything that's like paranormal. Um, the Conjuring was a one when I was a bit older, which I thought was terrifying. I had to almost turn it turn it off at one point. Mm -hmm. They're all quite like mainstream horrors that I've seen, so I've not seen any like super like niche horrors. Yeah, that's fine. There's a lot of cool ones out there I can recommend, or, or John probably is recommended. But Exorcist is a great movie, and I think that still holds up. It's a very yeah. uh, very creepy movie. Don't think that's scary after seeing more modern horrors. I think it is. Yeah, I think it, I think a lot of it is the. Uh, like the atmosphere of the movie. It's uh, very grim, I think. Yeah, I don't know how they do it, because also the special effects and stuff back then, obviously, they mm -hmm. don't have what they have now, but it's terrifying. It's so... Any kind of exorcism film, I, I get, like, I want to watch them because I find them so creepy. Me and my friend, like, when we were at uni, we used to, like, end up... We'd watch, like, any exorcism film that was on Netflix, and then we'd end up on YouTube watching, like, all those docu... Like, real, real-life exorcisms that you get on yeah. YouTube. Because I think we find them fascinating and super scary, and then you can't sleep because you just think maybe you're possessed. Do you know also uh -huh. special? They have like the behind the scenes stuff on those DVDs, and they're like, here's a real life recording of a demon, and you have to be careful because it might possess you. I used to watch uh -huh. all those and stuff and <laughs> sit in my bed and be like, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll get possessed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you had I had Eileen Dietz on who uh, who played uh, Regan in in a lot of the uh, the scenes that the the uh, that Linda Blair couldn't do because she's too young. Oh wow! I didn't know there was two actresses. Yeah, it was actually more than two, but uh, they kept it a secret for a long time because they wanted Linda Blair to be up for Academy Award, 
And from my understanding, there's actually bad bad blood between them because she eventually came out and said that she played some of the some of the role. And I think she was uncredited for a long time, and now she's credited on the uh, on the uh, in the movie on IMDb and whatnot. Yeah, I would be annoyed if I'd done part of it and didn't get. Yeah. I did wonder because well, she was like, what was she fourteen? Was she younger than that? Yeah, she's pretty young. So like some of the stuff like with the crucifix scene, you know, they didn't want an actual young girl to to do that kind of thing, you know. I was thinking that how on earth could you get? Also, I was thinking she clearly cannot watch this film because this is right. Yeah. When she watched it, did you, do you know when she watched it? I don't know. When Linda Blair, went, I'm not sure. Surely she wasn't allowed to. She was a bit older. Right. Yeah. With that, that's a weird concept to think. Like you're, you can star in a movie, but you wouldn't be allowed to watch the movie. Yeah, but there's so many horror films of kids because kids are so creepy. Yeah, but Eileen said that they actually had like a real priest on the set to like bless the set because people did think like there was, uh, you know, there was like real demons or something. It was very, it was very bizarre to to listen to. Wow, I love that kind of thing. And then you always yeah. get. I don't know. They just do it to like make the film sell better, but they'll be like, "Oh yeah, this person did die. <laughs> this person did get possessed," and right. that makes me want to watch something because I'm like, "Yeah, it's real. It's definitely real. Like they were all possessed on set. That's yeah. what happened." Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> so what? So you said you didn't really think of the zombie uh, when you're reading the script. Uh, when you're filming the movie and and you get to the gore scenes and the zombie scenes, uh, what was that like to film? Um. I was so annoyed because I went to the fight training with everyone during, we had like two weeks rehearsal, we had like a boot camp thing, and I got to go to the fight training, but then I don't really, without being a spoiler of anyone's listening who doesn't, doesn't, hasn't seen it yet, I don't do a massive amount of fighting zombies till maybe later on in the film, so mm-hmm. I actually didn't really get to meet any zombies till maybe my last week of filming, mm-hmm. um, and then that last week was really fun, I thought that was great, the makeup and... Um, just being in a room for the people who like normal people walking around, but they've got all the zombie makeup on. That was maybe some of my favorite stuff. That was more fun than the singing. I thought, cause like the singing was scary. The zombies went, I don't think the zombies, <laughs> you know, the right. the zombie who's like having a coffee is really, really <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the actual, we got to do a wee bit of fighting with, um, a lady called MC who is amazing fight choreographer. She did a little bit of taught us how to fight with the zombies. I didn't have to run away from any. Well, I had a little bit of running from them, but it was more fighting with the zombies. I think that was looked so fun. I didn't, I didn't find it that scary because, like, I guess in the setting, like, we'd all been hanging out before. But I know from the other guys who have the scene, you know, running through the Christmas trees. Yeah, I think that was quite scary because you have them jumping out at you, and you're right. in a warehouse full of trees. So I think that probably was quite scary. I'd love to do a horror film where you actually are having to. It is quite scary, and you're getting chased and stuff. I think that would be really fun yeah yeah have you ever done like a haunt like a uh that's me i don't know if that's big there here there's a lot of haunts where you walk through you know either the woods or they have things set up and people are dressed up as zombies and different scary things and they jump out and, and scream at you i've never done one i've seen a video of american horror story um mm-hmm. like they set up like a version of that and i think sarah paulson goes through it uh-huh. and it looks it looks so good i don't know if i could cope like <laughs> even when I watch horror films, like I get really, really, really genuinely terrified, and so I don't know if I could actually do one of those. Have you done many? I only only did one just a couple of years ago, and it was a very fun experience. Is it and scary? then it is scary because it's uh you know people. It's not like you think oh this is a real zombie, but just the idea of people jumping out at you and and, and screaming and stuff is scary. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, it's it's and then the one I went to. You could go during the day too and actually take your time and walk around and look at all the uh, the cool setup because you don't get to see it too too well when you're walking through it at night and people are jumping out and screaming at you. Mm-hmm. So it, it's a, it's a fun time. I think it sounds great. <laughs> I don't think I could do it though. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you could go to a, like a, a smaller version. And yeah. Work your way up. Yeah, I think to like Edinburgh has like a thing called Edinburgh Dungeons where it has like things that jump out at you and it's kind of like half historical half scary but i find that really scary still anything that's going to jump out at me even like during the day if my friend jumps out at me i get scared just the thought of a fright coming is too much yeah no i don't think i could handle it yeah so uh we mentioned off air uh i thought you were from london but you've just uh, lived in london for a couple years 
Yeah, yeah. I moved down to London when I graduated uni, which was a few years ago. Um, but I, I originally grew up in, yeah, in Scotland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to London for the first, uh, for England for the first time uh, this year for Fright Fest. And I had a really good time in London. Yeah, London's good. London's, just, there's so much to do. I, how long were you here for? Uh, Ten days. That's a good amount of time. Yeah. Did you do many touristy things? Uh, we didn't go to too many of the tourist kind of sites, a, f a couple of them. But uh, some of the people that I'm friends with from doing the show who live in England told me like some old pubs to go to. And that was fun, like yeah, ye old Cheshire cheese on uh, Fleet Street, and they told me to go down, st go down in the uh, stairs, and like downstairs was built in, like the 1600s, so it's like this old kind of almost like a dungeon that's carved into uh, into stone, and that, that was very cool to go to. Is that all the cheese and wine? Yeah, it's a, it's a, like an old pub. It, uh, it's called ye old Cheshire cheese, and uh, I think I have been there, and it's all like a cave inside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's and they do really nice wine in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, then, a uh, and Fleet Street was cool because that's where uh, Sweeney Todd. I don't know if you know who Sweeney uh, Sweeney Todd, another horror musical. I've that's seen the uh, Johnny Depp one, Tim Burton one. Yeah, it's very yeah. good. So yeah. I had to get a meat. Yeah, I had to get a meat pie on on, on Fleet Street oh, that's because cool. I was tempted to get a shave too because of Sweeney Todd. But uh, was he a real guy? Uh, it's a legend. I don't think yeah. I'm not sure he was real, but supposedly, you know, it's a legend. I'm not sure if he's like Robin Hood. I don't know if it's. I don't think he's a real guy, but it's fun to pretend he was. I know. I wonder why that is that we're so obsessed with like these horrible people in history that we just want to be. Real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is a good question. <laughs> so, did you did you uh, like watch any musicals to uh, to prepare for the movie? Mm, not really <laughs> I think I'm more of a horror fan than a musical fan I find yeah. musicals really like annoying sometimes when they start singing that's uh -huh. why like, see anyone who doesn't like musicals and are worried about seeing Anna I'd be like I, I don't really like musicals but I do think Anna's fun because the music's more maybe accessible like things like Les Mis like I try to watch it and they just don't stop singing and mm. like it's I don't know are you a fan of Les Mis? <laughs> I've actually never seen Les Mis. You don't even see it. Yeah. But, or, or you can if you want. I don't know. But right. I think like those kind of things, like anything that is kind of operatic and it, it, sometimes it's not the most accessible for people because it's it is like tough watching, I think, unless you love music, maybe, then maybe people really enjoy that, that style of music. But yeah, there's not many musicals that I, I'd seen. Um, I really liked Chicago. I'd seen that film when I was younger and I thought that was really fun. The music's great in it and it's so well filmed and it's um, just brilliant. And I think, I think, I hope that like the music in Anna, because it, it is really great music from Tommy and Roddy and it's, it's quite fun. I think it's got all like those kind of great aspects that musicals can do, like, and especially pairing it with a zombie film, like of having like the energy and the musicals are great for making you feel happy. Like they're like, as much as I don't like musicals, I think they're great for that. Um, I think that's that's a great combination that it had of the upbeatness and then death. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a really funny combination and really good to bring that in, so you have a balance. And even at the like darkest moments, the music still brings it up a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the movie does get dark and it is it does get very emotional. And I think it helps you can, uh, then when something does happen to the characters, you're more invested in them because you're having a lot of fun with them. And then, you know, if a character dies or is going to turn into a zombie, you, you feel more attached to them. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Music really in a, in a faster way, I think can make you understand the character or connect to a character. Cause it does, it makes you have fun with them and, and you'd be sad if something happens to them. I think that is the great aspect that music brings. I feel like I've just totally just musicals. I do think musicals are <laughs> such a sure. hard thing. And I so respect people that do musicals because I could not do musicals like on stage because it's so tough and those people are so talented. So I do think um, musicals are so good. I just, I think as a person, I'd probably more likely watch a horror than watch yeah. a musical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am. I'd be the same way, but I do like certain. I've, now that I'm thinking the most of the musicals I like are horror musicals. It's yeah, like, Rock uh, show that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, okay. Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, really? I love Little Shop. Yeah, <laughs> I saw the actual musical and the and the movie version. The original movie, 
is not a musical, but then the the eighties or maybe nineties remake is uh, is a musical. And do you think the music added to it compared to the original? Yeah, I think the the uh, it's a much different movie. Uh, the first one, the original one's fun though too. But the uh, I think more people know of the uh, I think people kind of discovered the original movie after the musical came out because I think it was more popular. That's like incredible as well that music can do that. I think there's so many films if you add music to it, it could be like comes a whole other film and yeah uh, in a really exciting way or, or tv series that have episodes with like yeah that's always to do that yeah like buffy was which was referenced a lot and um, because alan one of our writers loves buffy i love buffy i watched that when i was way too young i was obsessed with buffy the Vampire Slayer. um but that's a really fun episode when they added music into it once yeah yeah i was i went to uh it was a small production it was very fun it was silence the musical and it was a musical version of silence of the lambs and it was uh what happened in that i can't imagine that out it was very over the top uh songs and uh it was great because every everyone played it like kind of in a similar way Dan, where they play it like a musical but the music is very uh very strange but it, it was a very fun time that's so much fun i can't that'd be a really fun game to do to fight think of all the the, the weirdest movies to make into musicals and then to do it you right <laughs> Sounds of Lambs would be up there. That's a weird. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. So, uh, did you get? Did seems like the cast has a lot of chemistry together. Did you guys uh, all get along and become friends while making it? Yeah, yeah. I've never had an experience like that where it's like just literally, like just your best friends. You just and it happened so fast, and it was just really like I think because we we all just like were quite. New, I, Ella had done quite a lot actually yeah, and, and Sarah and that had done drama school and stuff but like a lot of us it was our first film so it was like it was just so we were all just like a bunch of kids that were so excited and we were filming it in a school mm-hmm. and the the makeup was in the school like the green room was in the school so we all just like hung out in the school all the time with each other and there was like days where like days where I wasn't filming that I wanted to come on set because I just wanted to be around them because they were so much fun and we had like nerf guns and for warm up <laughs> like there got us to all have like a massive nerf gun battle and like we had this big gym downstairs in mats and it was it was just so much fun and still like we, we're a big group we have a big group chat on our phone now with like all the the cast and a lot of um you know like like the writer and the direction of it like I'm it's still I'm I don't I don't know if it's normal because it was my first film but to like want to, to be in stay in touch with these people and like Ella's one of my best friends now like she used to live down the road from me she lives in New York now so I miss her a lot but um <laughs> Yeah, I I I think it was such a great film to like do, but also to make incredible friendships with on as well. That was I'm so grateful for that film for that. Yeah, and so when you did the festival run, I assume you know you guys, a lot of you would meet again. And what was that whole? Uh, what was that experience like uh, going to the festivals? Oh, that's fun. I don't know if it's, I've never done it before, but like you just get really drunk and watch loads of films. Like that. <laughs> that's so much fun. I'm trying to think of the. Stitches was really fun. They were all so fun. Edinburgh was pretty special because it was we're all all of, a lot of us we all couldn't go to because they were all far away and like people have work and stuff. But loads of us, nearly all of us, went to the Edinburgh Film Festival because it was in Scotland. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, we all just got really drunk <laughs> and we'll watched our film again. I do think it's it's a great film to watch with a drink. I think it can be really can heighten the experience. You can sing along. You don't feel like embarrassed to. <laughs> I think everyone should have a drink and go through the film. Yeah, I agree. They're actually at um, uh, Fright Fest. Right around the corner was this, uh, there was a bar, and they had this thing that was called the the Porn Star, Mar- not Margarita, Martini. Martini, and it, yeah. and it was, I actually drank two of them uh, <laughs> one, and they were, they're like bigger than my head. And uh, yeah, it, it did make the experience more fun than going to watch the movies. Yeah, it adds something to it, doesn't it? Also, I think any film like, Comedies, of course, having a drink is great because then you're really, really enjoying But also horror, it puts you in a place where I think maybe alcohol makes you believe everything a bit more or makes you, puts you a little less sensible. So then you really get carried away with stuff. So I think it's a great idea for some films to have a drink and completely let yourself go. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I agree. Uh, when I ordered the first one, because you're supposed to have like at least two people to drink it, and they, and he was just like for you, just for you. And I was like, yeah. He's like, okay. And so and you did it again. Yeah. Then I had another one, right? Was he like, 
again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it, was, it was like happy hour, so they were half price. So, so you were uh, making money, really. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was a good time. How about um, uh, uh, Paul K, who played, he's kind of like the villain in the movie. Yeah. Uh, I thought he was, he was great in, in, the, in the film. Paul is, a, is brilliant. I actually, because my stuff's like in the school, I got to like see him work quite a lot. Like his scenes with um, Mark Benton and stuff. So I thought, I think he's fascinating. Not that, I think he's an incredible actor. I just love watching him working. And um, he's such a cool guy. Like he's just really cool. Like you would expect him to be cool. And he is just really cool. And um, I think in the film, he's hilarious. I think he does everything. And he's not like, I don't think he's like, I don't know that much, but I don't think he's an actor who's scared to do crazy things. I think he completely embraced the fact that it was mental. And his song is like this kind of punk. Yeah rock song and he totally made that his own and yeah i thought he was so interesting to watch work yeah it's actually really an interesting character because it's like you know the world is now an apocalypse and so he's a teacher but th- this is what he really wants to be like and now he's got no repercussions so he can uh he can <laughs> act however he likes you know? he's a teacher who hates children and hates <laughs> children. Yeah, there's probably a lot of teachers I yeah yeah i would think so <laughs> and it's also quite funny like the lyrics in that song because it is like a lot of there's that thing about kids and phones and being a bit brain dead nowadays and stuff and and so now yeah exactly what you said that the, mr savage can now completely say all these things and and go mad at all these kids when he was constrained before i guess the apocalypse would do that to you wouldn't you would just say everything you've ever wanted to say and <laughs> behave how you want to behave yeah yeah that's what i liked about it what would so- you do you were in an what would I? I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe I'd just go to an old theater and, and try to board it up and just watch movies. That's pretty boring, but no, that's great. <laughs> yeah, completely in the right industry. <laughs> you should completely do that. That would be a lovely, a really nice way to spend the apocalypse until the zombies got in. Right, right. I, if it was like, oh no, maybe that's a spoiler. I have to be careful what I say. I don't know if people, how many people have seen Anna, but I guess there's like Chris. Chris's character, Chris, uses that at one point as a tool to fight the zombies. He uses film a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. So maybe you'd be fine. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah, mm-hmm. it could be. I, I know some old, nice old theaters up in Boston. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what would you do? I'd hide. <laughs> I'd, just, <laughs> I'd get away from any city. My mom lives in the countryside, so I think I would just go to the countryside and just or maybe I just become a zombie. Like to be honest, if everyone's just become a zombie, why don't you just do it sooner? Why put up all the effort of running and fighting and being scared? Whereas if you just get over with and become mm-hmm. a zombie, and then you're part of the zombie thing, and maybe it's more fun to be on that side. Right. I don't right. know. I don't know what it's like a zombie. It might actually not be that bad. Right. Uh, hmm. Seems like they're always hungry. I always wonder. Uh, cause zombie and in, in zombie movies they're always eating people. Now, uh, what what happens when they eat someone? Do they do they have to go to the bathroom a lot, or do they actually digest the? You never see like a zombie get really fat from from eating like uh, people all the time. That's a good point. Wonder why they're so like? Are they in pain? Do they have to eat to like stop them being? If they're that hungry, like like I know being really hungry is a horrible feeling. So maybe they're just they're like in pain. Maybe That's they're true. using to eat so much. And then when they eat, yeah, where does it go? Does it make them, does it just make them a bit more alive? Do they die if they don't eat people? Like properly? Right, do they just starve? Yeah. yeah. Now this, that would be a good movie is if they do get fat. So like in the, so you give them like five or 10 years and then they get so big, they can't move. That's fat zombies. So they're just sitting around. <laughs> just rolling down. The road. <laughs> right. Uh. <laughs> That's a <laughs> uh, you mentioned you like the paranormal uh, horror movies. Uh, did you did you like uh, zombie movies before you did Anna? And did you watch any of them before you did the movie? Um, Twenty Eight Days Later, I I watched that. I like I love that film. Have I seen mm-hmm. many other zombie films? I haven't seen Dawn of the Dead. I know that's like a big one. I yeah. actually really thought about because I guess oh, and maybe and I was just being a bit like. I was just approaching it as like just thinking about Lisa. I wasn't really thinking about the overall film, mm-hmm. so I, I hadn't. And because Lisa doesn't super interact with a lot of zombies, I hadn't really thought about researching zombies particularly. Sarah made a video so we all understood how zombies moved. 
and she must have done a bit of research into how different zombies um different like i guess in different films you have and you had mentioned like some zombies run some zombies Summer, run. like the shambling yeah shuffling but, like yeah. i hadn't i haven't watched loads of zombie films um but luckily we we're working with people who knew so much about it that like they gave us all the answers <laughs> yeah well, by the way if you ever do uh, return of the living dead which is a horror comedy it does actually delve into the idea that uh that they are in pain and that's why they want to eat brains ah. it's interesting so you feel sorry for i'd watch warm bodies you know the comedy one yeah yeah and that one i felt was nice because it like gave it from the point of view of the zombie and he was like kind of mm-hmm. coming back to life and i love help maybe i have seen zombies sometimes just really talked about also what's that other one i saw recently not recently War- is that a zombie film world war z yeah it's a zombie film yeah yeah yeah, I've watched a few zombie films. I guess I just don't. Zombies are just to me. They're just like they're they're a really good villain, aren't they? Because they're like you can kind of feel sorry for them sometimes. I don't know. I've never felt that sorry. I've never felt that like scared of zombies. I've kind of felt more sorry for them because they're they were the people in the film, and then they become the baddies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think the and I twenty eight days later, some people argue it's not a zombie. They're uh, like infected people. Because they can run, can't they? Yeah. Yeah. I found them scary. Maybe it's the running that scares me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the other ones, you can really just kind of walk around them. Unless there's a big swarm of them. Yeah, I found that really scary. Yeah. So, uh, what made you want to become an actor? Um, I think just, um, like, well, like you, I love movies. So, I've, I've watched a lot, a lot of films when I was younger. We used to, like, rent films every Friday and I think I would just really there wasn't that many theatres near me but like I, I just I didn't know acting was a job because no one I know does it mm-hmm. um, but I just really love movies and then um, when I was looking I liked art initially I, went, I was good at art in high school so then I went for I went to an open day in art school to have a look at the courses they did there and there was a film department I remember asking the directors like how they found their actors and stuff and I gave them my email and then I started auditioning for short films mm-hmm. and um really really love being on set i love like working with a team yeah i think that that was probably just realizing that that was a job and that's like the funnest thing in the world to like play pretend and and like get to know a whole crew and get to know all, all these creative people who want to um make make something really amazing and they're all you're all working together to make something i think that's part of the reason of being an actor you're contributing to make a bigger thing and it's it's such a fun job. Mm-hmm. Is there, um, are there a lot, a lot of opportunities to make movies in Scotland um, or to be involved in movies? I think where I grew up in the middle of nowhere, there wasn't, and I, I didn't really know like how you got into it. Um, I think it's getting better. Scotland doesn't have a huge, they've been trying to get a film studio for ages. I think they maybe might be soon, but like it's been a long time. Like I had to move to London to get more work because there, there's not enough to sustain yourself just in Scotland. But Scotland's recently been making some really, really exciting things. So I really hope it keeps making more films because there's tons of really talented people up there who have great stories to tell. And I think it's sad that when you only see films from like England or, you know, LA, that are, like they're great, but if they're only stories about certain people in cities, like it's not really doing a service because you, you kind of want to tell stories from all over the world, don't you? So mm-hmm. if there was more from smaller towns and places within these big countries. Yeah. And in Scotland, uh, the movies you did watch, um, cause I, I'm not sure. Are they, were they primarily ones from, from, uh, from UK or was it a lot of American movies? Um, I think mostly American were the films that like in the video store we used to rent from, there was all like, you know, rom-coms. That was probably the big thing that we used to watch a lot of, a lot of comedies. Um, and, um, yeah, growing up, I guess then, I, as I grew up, I just watched more British films. When, when I started, like, when I went to uni and realised I did um, a, a joint, like, English and drama course, and then some of the English lectures we did, like, we looked at films and stuff, and then a lot of British cinema, and I loved the films that they were making. I loved the films that some of the Scottish directors up and coming were making. Um, so I love Scottish cinema, too. I love, kind of, like, just love films. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lauren on uh, on Twitter wants to know: uh, Did you have any Im- improv uh, improv lines or moments in the movie? Um, 
let me think. I mean, the script was really good, so there wasn't like, and it was quite structured the way that John did it. That we, I don't think there was a huge um, amount of time that we'd have been able to fit in in Provland. He was very open to like the way we delivered it and the way we did it. Like he got Ben, who played Nick, to do all these funny things. So uh, you know, the scene in the canteen at the start before Hollywood ended. Ella's character Anna's looking over at him and he got him to do all because when he was off camera as well making doing all these I went actually I think one of them made the cut like he made him do a rude thing and he did all kinds of things like to get a reaction for Ella so I think yeah there was definitely actually there's a I lie there's loads of bits that we got to improv like maybe not so much lines but like John really let us feel free to like be the characters and do what we wanted like there's um there's bits where so Ben also so me so us six like we all met and became really good friends and we rehearsed for two weeks and then on one of the first few days of filming when we did Hollywood Ending, Ben met the three guys who were really funny who played his like cronies, mm-hmm. his like gang. And I swear to you, within like half an hour, Ben didn't talk to us. Like he was, that was <laughs> the guy. And he sat at his table and like they wouldn't talk to us anymore. So there's a wee bit in Hollywood Ending where they're all like dancing and Ben's like, sit down, sit down. I'm pretty sure that was like improving. <laughs> um, there was a bit where me and Chris are dancing at the table. I didn't even know they were filming. Like mm-hmm. we got told the, the camera was on on Paul doing Savage's bits thing and so we were just mucking about the table so I think there was bits that like there was definitely bits where we were allowed to also because it's a musical and like Sarah would be like this is the general outline for Hollywood End and like you can add your own bits like just do like a punch here or this but do what you think your character would do so a lot of the dancing is like I think she worked to keep in keeping with the characters like they aren't trained dancers like where we're like doing weird dancing that like they just let us improvise a bit and have so much fun and like that bit on the table, Chris was just like, we should do a spin here, we should pick you up. Like we just got a bit carried away and we're like, they, but they completely let us add loads of our personality into a lot of the musical bits. And I think, I'm trying to think, it's so long ago and I'm trying to think of the lines of any, any of it was improvised. I think we mostly kept the script, but the script was really funny. So I don't think, I thought Alan Ryan had done such a good job. We didn't massively need to go off book for it. Yeah. Uh, how about the dance scenes themselves? So you know, when you're filming a big dance number, uh, what is that experience like? And did you have any background in that? Um, I actually did a dance, and I, I should I shouldn't say this because I'm definitely not a professional dancer, but I, I mm. love dance. I used to do dance classes like tap and ballet and all that when I was little. So I was really excited for the dance and, and for Sarah to bring it in. I was like, I don't know how to sing, but I know how to dance. I was super <laughs> excited for doing the dance stuff. But the way I... Um, like Sarah did want to keep it in like she also did not have a lot of time this was an indie film so she had so she had to go choreograph all the dance like by herself and film it all her doing all the different parts and then she'd teach us and she got in like proper dancers to do a lot of the majority of the dancing so our stuff was more it didn't need to be massively technical it was more like the how the characters would dance but like I loved all the dancing in the film, getting to dance on a table. That was so fun. I love the dancing in my song. It's that time of year. She just sent me, a, it's not like I'd said to Sarah before, I was like, I can do tap dancing. I'll bring my tap shoes. <laughs> like <laughs> what kind of dance do you want? And then Sarah's like, no, I, don't, I think we need to, it doesn't need to be that, that much. Like she just needs to be sexy and a bit cheeky. So like, but she sent me a little video with like little moves that she was doing. And she was like, just take whatever you want and kind of make it your own. Mm-hmm. So she was a great choreographer. Cause she like was there for all the support, but she was very much, very supportive of you bringing your own ideas and your own kind of dance style to it. And you didn't need to be like a Broadway dancer. Yeah. Uh, also here on, uh, on Twitter, uh, feisty Mexer, uh, Mexericon wants to know, uh, was it hard to keep a straight face while singing the lines in it's that time of the year? Um, um, do you know what? See when I first got that song in the edition, they hadn't finished writing it, I think. So when I first got it, I didn't really know what I was saying because <laughs> they would sing me a bit and then I'd repeat it and I wasn't, it didn't totally click in my head what I was singing about till later on. So it wasn't until later on I was like, oh, this song's quite dirty. And I, but it didn't really like fully, comp- I didn't really comprehend about how dirty it was till much later. And when we were actually filming it, I think because I was so nervous, I didn't think like it was, in my head, I didn't think it was funny. I just thought, also, I guess Lisa in her head, it's like dead serious. Like she's <laughs> completely singing this for Chris and she's like thought about this. And I don't think she thinks this is for comedy value. She's thinking completely like, this is a love letter to you. And that's her, that's her being genuine to him. Like yeah. without being, uh, yeah, I think I, I actually didn't think it was that funny when I was singing it. I think I just thought, this is what Lisa thinks and what she wants to say <laughs> for a boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. 
So you mentioned the, uh, we talked about, you know, the, the, um, the festival run and then, um, you know, now it's got a theatrical release, a uh, wide release. Uh, so what's that experience like been like, you know, go to the festivals and, you know, it's cool. People see it. And now, you know, a wider audience can see the movie. It's been weird. Like the biggest, like, cause I've been up in Scotland doing another film. So I feel like I've not really been hugely aware of like the, the biggest, um, the most I've been aware of it is Twitter. Twitter is amazing for people writing stuff and um, reviews or saying they, they've enjoyed it. Like, or like I've had falls and then I've noticed that people have seen it. And that's been, that's been so exciting. Like, sitting seen on your phone like you're able to see that people are enjoying this film you've made but I've, I've mostly been quite sheltered from sheltered from it all because I've been doing another job but I know um I think it's been crazy for Ella and for John because they've been in LA Ella's in New York I think she went down to Dallas I don't know if she went to Boston she was all around the place like doing a lot of promotion for it and um seeing uh, meeting doing Q&A's and meeting a lot of people who've watched it so I think for her it's been incredible to, to to see it reach a wider audience. And I think people, in, I hope in the UK, I've not been as aware of it in the UK. I know in America, it seems like people have really embraced it. Like they seem to, um, seem to, from Twitter, I hope anyway, they seem to yeah. really be enjoying it. So it's, it's so nice that it's getting a wider release. So more people get to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been, uh, a lot of people I know have, uh, really been loving the movie. So that's so that's good. good. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything, uh, that you're working on? that could be coming out um so i did a film at start i did two films this year one of them is called run with a scottish director called scott graham who is incredible he's um that will be coming out at some point next year hopefully i think i'm not sure i think it maybe might do festivals and then um i just finished on monday filming a film called the sopranos which isn't the soprano of the gangsters <laughs> it's um <laughs> another film um from a director called michael kate and jones um, and Sony are producing that one, and that's about six Catholic school girls who are a bit wild and end up going for a choir concert and then going a bit, bit mental. And that's actually got music in it too. And that's Tommy and Roddy, the same guys who did Anna, have also are also doing the music for for this one. I've oh, just cool. done. so that one, um, yeah, will hopefully be in cinemas next year as well. Very cool. And how can people uh, follow you online? Not not like at your house. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> how, how can they? Okay. Yeah, like a follow you know online on Twitter. Yeah, I've got like Twitter and Instagram, but that's all quite. I don't even know if I'm interested enough to follow. I think I just put pictures up of quite. Yeah, I've got it's just my name, Marley. So I've got on on Twitter and on Instagram. Yeah. It's been really nice, like seeing people on Twitter pop up and follow and, and mention things. If anyone enjoys the film, I could always want to write back to them because I think that's so nice. They've taken the time to tweet or anything about it. That's that's so nice of them. Yeah. <laughs> grateful that they enjoy the film yeah well it's been a uh, wonderful to talk to you I had a lot of fun okay thank you so much for calling and enjoying the film and being interested in it <laughs> yeah definitely my uh uh one of um i don't know if you're familiar with the movie hellraiser um yeah no i've heard of it yeah i've not seen it yeah nicholas vince who plays one of the cenobites chatter he he loved the movie he was at uh fright fest and i'm friendly with him from from the show and uh, he was the one who really recommended me to see the movie so Oh, amazing! Please say thank you. I will definitely. Also, tell John because he's definitely been Hellraiser. And he'll be. Oh, Hellraiser! The one with all the things on his face. Yeah, Pinhead, right? Oh, wow! That's incredible. Thank you so much he... for for him for watching it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He loved it. So I wanted, I wanted to mention it. That's great. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thanks. Hey, this is Alan Troutman, and you are listening to WithoutYourHead.com. I don't know how you can listen without your head, but there you are.